I'm Amy, sex educator, sex and relationship coach, and sex shop owner. And I'm April, VP of an international high-end pleasure products company and boss queen sex toy mogul. We're best friends who make our own rules about who we are as sexual beings. With everything from how to be a badass in the bedroom to top tips for bringing your relationship to the next level, we have something just for you. So sit back, relax, and and enjoy enjoy the show. Don't forget to head on over to our website at shamelesssex.com for more. And for 15% off of some of our favorite sex toys, use coupon code SHAMELESSPP in all caps at purepleasureshop.com. You are listening to a pleasure podcast. For more from our sex podcast collective, visit pleasurepodcasts.com. Well, hello, everyone. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Shameless Sex Podcast episode. I don't even know, but this episode is on senior sex. And I forgot how we define senior sex with this awesome speaker, Joan Price. Did she say... We talk about it on the podcast, so stay tuned. Stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, she, yeah, she didn't even say if it was a certain age. She actually had a no, broader it, yeah, way to describe... It wasn't because we talked about my partner and the <laughs> fact that he could be considered... It depends how you define senior. Yes, and yeah. it's he's, like... He would, if he was listening right now, he'd lose his I shit. I know, which I was like, let's not tell him that he's considered to have senior sex. Not that it's a bad thing. He would just take specific offense to it because Ex- and what i will say i asked him i'm like why don't you get an arp card <laughs> let's get us some discounts <laughs> well okay and i will say in this day and age you know like 50 is the new 40 right so i your your know, partner is 50 years old and he he looks and acts like a 30 something yeah late 30s yeah yeah, so no, he's. I wouldn't put him in. Don't ever. If anyone knows him, teenager don't sometimes. Him, don't tell him that April put him in that category. No, please. no, I don't. I mean, remember when I we started this and I was saying I wanted some old diaka? <laughs> yeah, because I I was sleeping with him and and dude, and, when we tell people how we met, I was like, well, my best friend was banging him out and basically got a good review. Yeah, <laughs> and I was like, hey, you want to try this? I'm back in my old relationship and I banged out with this guy twice, and I didn't say banging out. That's April's term, but I had sex with him twice and. And, uh, and and he's pretty awesome, so you should probably try this out. And she's like, sure. And I do like the term banging it out because it's just fun and whimsical and made me feel good when I was in my tear stage because I wasn't like, we made love. Bang I'm like, we banged it out. Whimsical to you. <laughs> yeah. I would never it think of the up word. some whimsical, whimsical. vibrations <laughs> deep within me. So <laughs> yeah, at least someone feels like it's whimsical. <laughs> oh, that's good oh, shit. Uh, all my, right. My mm. voice is better. Have you... Have you been paying attention? You notice that I can actually talk and my nose isn't all congested. It's night and day from yesterday. I know. I've been packing myself full of vitamins, zinc. I got so nauseous this morning because I ate so many vitamins. I was like, oh, I need to eat something. Oh, shit. <laughs> and I was going to go to the gym and I couldn't because I, but I've been eating just like tons of wellness stuff. Are you on or something? Because you said it's like night and day. Uh, no, but I took, um, I just took a bunch of wellness stuff and zinc and then I've been eating emergencies and and different things, but I think it, I killed it. Have and tried, oil of oregano. Have you ever tried giving a blowjob with a stuffy nose? No, <laughs> I have not. I don't know if I've tried before, but it sounds like you need like a snorkel of some sort. This sounds... You know, the, the whole thing about having a congested nasal passage is that you can't taste food you can't taste wine you can't taste things might be the time to give a blowjob then i think if it would be (laughs) like if i if you had to if you had no choice and you had to lose one of your senses you smell for sure really yes i would not choose smell i know people definitely not taste oh my god i would a hundred percent choose smell i might choose hearing but I wonder if I, I want to sometimes just block out things. What? You would choose hearing. I'm not over committing to that a hundred percent. Do you? Maybe I'd choose. If you lost your hearing, you would have a hard time with speech in general. So your not speaking skills would be challenged. Maybe one of my ears. Okay. <laughs> so you choose smell? Yes. I know people that don't have a sense of smell, and their lives are not that affected by it. every other sense. You kind of be fucked. What about touch? I would never get rid of that. Are you serious? I mean, that's my language, my love language. How would you even get rid of touch? You just have no... I'm just trying to think. If someone said you're going to have to lose a sense, you have to think about this concept. I'm pretty sure you get rid of smell or taste, actually. If I could get rid of that, and then I just eat vegetables all the time. <laughs> and that's it. Oh, man. I don't, I don't know. like sugar. That's a hard one. I don't even like wine. I definitely like sight. <laughs> I'm not getting rid of sight or touch or... Yeah. No, 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 no. 
Mm-hmm. Anyway, something to think about for later. I'm going to contemplate that and I'll get back Listeners, to you. Listeners, everyone who uh, wants to tell April what, what you sense, you would give up. Everyone email April at just kidding, <laughs> and <laughs> at tell her five, five, five. that none of you would give up your hearing. I'm pretty sure. Um, anyways, unless you have screaming kids, maybe you want to. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's a hard gig. We're teaching everyone a diamond adult world Friday, October 25th. Oh my gosh, I think I said 24th in the last podcast. Let's double check this on the air. Yep. 25th blew it on the last podcast it's the 24th son of beach uh, <laughs> that's 2019 in Atascadero, california go to diamondadultworld.com it's orgasm 101 again this is friday october 25th and i might need to edit out the other podcast which bumps me out because that's no fun but uh it's not in there yet and so you can come and learn i think the class is probably an hour and a half you get a lot of free goodies i think they have food trucks there and then there's really there's night. food trucks i think so it's like and, a whole block party well and it's up on a little hill it's actually such a great it's a spot. hill party there's a hill party and <laughs> they have a back room that's separate that we'll probably be teaching in that's really yes. nice and learn about orgasms. you can come and shop and get discounts and learn about orgasms and hang out with amy and I for an evening. Yep. And if you ask nicely, we might give you a hug. And you can meet Legend. You can meet Legend, her He'll dog. He'll sign. We well, actually might need a babysitter. So if anyone wants to. Oh, yeah. If anybody wants to watch <laughs> Legend. Your applications with your. Um, we need to see prior experience with dog watching. <laughs> He's actually a great animal to watch. Except he. So listen, wait. Can I tell you a quick side story? It's really funny. It's t- 20 seconds. So he has really bad. <laughs> he had bad. Um, bowel movements. He had ate something weird, so it's been liquidy. And so I gave him activated charcoal, so he's been shitting black. <laughs> and basically, he woke up, and all of a sudden, I heard like some gnarly sounds. And then I look, and there's like now a black stain on my carpet. Oh no! And it woke him out because he it was shitting coal, buddy. Are you shitting black coal on carpets, <laughs> on white carpets? And yeah, it was really, it's actually really, he's better now, but His it was. His face looks so innocent. It like, was sad, but really funny because I was like, oh my God, the poor little guy's just feeling bad and now he's pooping coal. That's a bummer. I know. Oh, buddy. Uh, get, he's on my white carpet as we speak. I'm a little concerned. No, no, no. He, it's all out of his system now. <laughs> I checked. I guess it's off-white. He told <laughs> me to get this like printed off-white version. Um, okay. So at the end of this podcast, there is going to be an audio clip. We played an audio clip or two uh, on some past podcasts. Then most of them are like some sort of sex ed parody clips. This one is some sensual um, audio on YouTube, but there's also a Patreon because guess what? YouTube is now regulating uh, all sexual content. So even our stuff on YouTube sometimes gets taken down. So this person is this all audio, right? There's not even any like sexual imagery. It's all audio, and yet so they're losing some of their their video so at the end of the podcast if you very 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 and if you want to hear some audio clip of some sensual um juicy i don't even know how to fully describe it but audio it's only about three minutes it's long. an experience it's an experience and it is by someone named we decided gail g-a-e-l they're irish so we're going with gail and they're an audio creator from ireland to go listen to more of their clips oh my dad's calling me back because he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't. This is a classic. He stood me up today. <laughs> oh my gosh! I'm oh, getting the daddy issues later. Thanks, Dad. Um, he's losing his memory, so it's okay. Uh, I forgive you. So to learn more, if you want to go listen to it, go to YouTube's their YouTube channel. It's G A E L Force F O R C E Audios, and you can learn more. And then they also have the Patreon that you can go and actually listen to more. It's like a G Force. G Force, but like Gail. G A E L Force. Audios.com. Thank you, Gail, for your submission. Except it's not dot com. It's not on YouTube. Oh. Mine is a dot com. So I'm distracted by the dad. Oh, I know. There's a lot of distractions today, but I'm actually liking this. This is like our old school way we used to do the podcast where we were like, da da da. Does everyone tell like it's back? Like my, I wonder if my dad is leaving a message right now, like, oh no, mouse. He calls me mouse. <laughs> or or Amster Hamster. It's mostly mouse. Really? Yeah. Mouse. My dad calls me babies. Babies? He's like, hello, like babies. No, it's from some, <laughs> that song, Chantilly Lace and a pretty face and a ponytail just a hanging down. The big bopper. And he goes, hello, babies. <laughs> That's where it comes from. <laughs> Oh my god, well, I don't know where mouse came. I think I, I kind of look like a rodent or something, or I did when I was a kid. I, my friends did call me Rattling when I was a... Uh, Rattling? Yeah, those bitches. <laughs> my nickname's Ape Nuts. Ape Nuts? I mean, I'm Bald Nuts. Oh. That's my last name. 
Rattling was when the, my friends were <laughs> doing the Mean Girls thing in sixth grade, and they decided they wanted to make fun of everything. You need make very cute, dainty, skinny nose, you fuckers. Okay, anyways. I'm trying to angry. think of my other nicknames. Sometimes when, when I bring up dad stuff, I get in my masculine, and I get, like, fierce. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully I can answer these sex questions without being too fierce. Okay, here's one. My peak time for being sexually aroused is in the mornings when I get up at, but my husband is, this is not his morning Woody is just for show. He's actually not turned on all for show. Like mentally he's ready, but physically he is not. Do you have any advice, tips or tricks to get him ready to go in the mornings? In the morning, I respect a human that likes to get down in the morning because I have trouble. Me too. I'm like, is this thing on? That's what I do. I'm like, <laughs> dirk, dirk, dirk. Oh, man. I'm like, my mouth is all like, <laughs> and I'm like, my hair is all over the place, which I don't care about how I look necessarily. I usually have to pee right away when I wake up too. And there's just like a few. You need your coffee before you can go. I know. And, like do and whole... I'm just not fully connected to my body and I'm not really breathing into my space to like wake myself up. I'm just kind of groggy and a little i don't know out of it i'm my so the other morning like straight out of bed not straight out of bed straight out of opening my eyes you go to your oats (laughs) i need a little bit of time to wake up my body my body does not like my arousal takes a while to access and so it takes a little bit of time um i i mean i could i could wait on my oats but i think having like a cup of tea or a cup of coffee or meditating or something meditate would be the most the best option honestly. that's what i try to do right when i wake up my eyes open and i go straight to the call map yeah. and um i open it up we they, they've they were a partner with us before i went point i loved that that's how i learned about it and then i use it every day but that so, would be the way but pre-sex first of all that's the best time to meditate Second, yeah, all the app makes it easier. We're, they were not sponsored by them anymore, so can't really say much other than go check yeah, out the, the comment. <laughs> um, but also, the doing a meditation before sex arousal, etc., gets you in your body and much more, more present. Dipsy, they could listen to a Dipsy erotica Ooh, episode. Yeah, because you just turned one on for me. women. It's designed for women, but. I think anyone could listen to that. I think though, I, anyone you, you could probably say get, anyone can listen yeah. to. Yeah, but it's just it's more designed for women. I listened to it to one. And I was like, that is some because spicy think about shit. everyone's phones typically, and I'm not going to say everyone, but I feel like a lot of folks that I know, including myself, their phones are next to their bed. So if you just open an app, which is why I use the easy app like meditation, but yeah. an easy erotica app when it's next to your bed to turn that on and kind of get spiced up. Yeah, that would help. I, I, I honestly I'm okay. So that. here's the thing: so a lot of people have differing ideas about when they're more turned on. Some people are nighttime people. Some people are morning people. Some people are later morning people. Some people are afternoon people, and some people are all over the place. So if you're a morning person and they are a nighttime person, then this is a negotiation. You don't want to only do mornings for that would only fit you, and so they wouldn't get what they wanted. You don't want to only do nights or afternoons or whatever theirs is because then you would lose. So it's a negotiation and it's a conversation. You ask them. Like you're asking us, what can you do to get him in the mood? Well, why don't you also ask him? You know, okay, what do you, what when you wake up, you know, we, we don't have to have sex all the time in the morning, but because I'm into it, I'd like to do that sometimes. What do you need to get in the mood? And then how can we do that? And like April's saying, you know, audio things, we could do erotic meditations. My partner, because he's a total morning person, he'll bring me coffee to bed in the morning. Ah. And I think it's so sweet. And then kind of like we'll start kind of snuggly and I'll drink a little coffee. And then I'm like, you're so sweet for bringing me coffee. And then if like... I'm still not feeling it. I'll kind of use a product or a toy or something. Now, if the rules were reversed and I wanted it in the morning, I'd probably try to do the same, bring him coffee and then be like, hey, like maybe I'll just kiss kiss yeah. your morning wood. Yeah. And then see how that feels. And again, if it's if the morning for you is right when you wake up and it's not for this person, then maybe there's just some things that they need before to like April saying coffee or something else to happen and then it can happen. Um, honestly, I have never had absolutely incredible first thing in the morning sex. I've had the connected sweet sex, but my most juicy orgasms and like, Oh my God, that was mind blowing for me. This is just me. Some bodies wake up ready to go. Yeah. Um, so if he, if your partner, he husband, right? Morning husband? wood. Yeah. Husband morning wood. I think they said husband. Yeah. yeah. My husband, husband is not. Yeah. If uh, he is not ready to go right away in the morning, then maybe you just find like later morning, like April said, when there's more, uh, or more bring him coffee point. or tea if he's into tea or something sweet to be like, Hey, 
Like that's always that's really nice. It's super easy, especially if you're a morning person, to like creep downstairs, go turn on the coffee pot or French press, get it ready, bring it up, and be like wake wake them up sweetly and and be like, hey, maybe you could dress up as a sexy barista. Yeah, or you could start Welcome using your toy. To Star fucks, or you start turning <laughs> yourself on, and maybe that'll do the trick. Turn it into a porn video. Welcome to Star fucks. <laughs> yeah. Would you like a orange mocha frappuccino? Okay. <clears throat> Next question. We have two sex questions. We're putting this one on here because we are sponsored by Manscaped and we love Manscaped products. This question is about manscaping. I have a question about manscaping. I've never groomed my pelvic area. This is a penis owner, everyone. But the woman I am dating has asked me to do that. They would like me to trip my bush, which I am more than delighted to, except that I've never done this before. I need some manscaped coaching. I use a regular hair trimmer. And, but like the one you use for shaving your head and it nicked my soft skin down there and drew blood. Ouch. Anyway, how do you guys do this safely? And do you guys use a razor on the scrotum? Oh my gosh. Also, what do you think is the best way to trim the pubes for a man? Totally bald, little square or short of short hair. Does the hair add to the woman's pleasure or is bare skin better? I would love to address this because I've had it all down there. I've had lots of hair. I've had... Uh, trimmed up. I've had bald. Bald. Balls I've had, ball. and I think a little bit. And this is my own preference. And you're just going to have to communicate and and feel into what you like and try it all. Try to shave it all and see if you like that. Try to just keep a little bit trimmed down. I like the little. I like hair there trimmed down, nicely trimmed. For me, it's also easier for oral because I get less. And I don't like. I don't like a lot of hair in my mouth in general, even my own. So I like uh, less hair, and then it like creates a little bit more smoothness um, during. Um, sex for me. The lawnmower 2.0 is what you could get from Manscaped though for to help you so you won't nick your balls. You can take a straight edge razor to your balls. You have to just pull the, the skin. skin. Yeah. Because I I mean I you know when I shave my labium my it's the same kind of concept. I don't pull it straight but I definitely like kind of make it taut because then you get like the skin. You can also just start in like d- nicking yourself is scary. So starting with the lawnmower 2.0 for yeah. Manscaped. Yeah. And then from there, Which an ad is coming up. Yeah. And then you can that. make a nicely trimmed, um, area. And I would say start with, um, leaving some hair there and then check in with yourself if you like that. And then maybe trim it all down and go bald for a little while and just play with it. It grows. So it's your okay, own it art piece. Yeah, yeah. You can always come back. Well, okay, so yeah, I like April said with the lawnmower, lawnmower 2.0, I, I recommend, yes, using uh, trimmers that are designed for pubic hair, not for faces and for heads and you know, other parts of the bodies because they have different angles and shapes and they're designed so that they don't nick your skin in, in such sensitive areas. Um, I personally am a fan of pubic hair. Um, I, just, I decided in my, God, I was like one of the only friends of our friends with pubic hair other than you 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 always rocked a little i don't think you do anymore though no i have always rocked pubic yeah, hair. yeah you and i were thinking we're the my only people. ex-partner liked bald and i was always refusing he was oh, like just yeah. shave it all off i was like no nope. go fuck yourself not, you shave yours all off seven years old and then he did yeah i was like i need a little bit i have no i'm not shaming anyone that is bald for me no. i like a for, little bit of hair speaking of personally for, for yeah. me on my body i need to have a little bit of hair and i have gone bald and every time it feels awkward and um, and that's just for me also when I have pubic hair and my lovers have pubic hair, my hair can rub on their hair and then I feel more. It also rubs on my clit or my clit on my, but you know, my pussy on their genitals on their, and if they're bald and if they're prickly, then it kind of stabs me a little bit. Or if they're bald, there isn't as much texture. Um, so I'm personally a fan. Now, if someone was rocking a massive pubic hair bush, you know, like literally we're talking, yeah. like, over an I've been inch there. in thickness, yeah, super bush. Then I would probably want a light trim because then I would feel kind of like buried in a forest. So, but I wouldn't. I still personally wouldn't prefer. I would. Pre- I prefer some texture there and not completely. That was gone. just hard because you get more smells too because it just like the With hair a ton of fur. Yeah, yeah and oh, like, that's what's designed to do is hold the pheromones. Yeah, so the, yeah. yeah, so it's it's for me it was too intense and I was like okay. Uh, that's a lot. Cause that's I'm a so lot curious of maintenance. About whose bush you're talking about? 
really? I think I have an idea. Yeah. Um, <laughs> definitely wasn't your ex-husband. No, <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> um, yeah. So anyways, that is our, our five cents on um, what you can do. And like April said, it can always grow back. Go get the manscaping kit. Yeah. We're going to stay tuned for the manscaped ad because that actually is awesome mm-hmm. for tool, tool wise. Well, your, your partner has it. Yeah. And it's a little kit. It's beautiful. They, yeah. the, it looks awesome and it's kind of fun to open it. It's, it's cool. So they check it out. They gifted us a kit and I didn't have a partner. So I said, here, April, give this to your man. And now his nuts, nuts are not snagged. <laughs> well, you gave your housemate the, uh, I don't think he'd use jack shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh no, he did. He did the, but the ball chafing stuff. Yeah. Cause he's a bike but rider. He, my, he rides mountain bikes. Yeah. So he did. And so he we liked, liked it. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, so there you go. We just split it up cause yeah. I had the partner. Yeah. You had the housemate <laughs> housemate that mountain bikes so there you go um okay so anyways um enough of our silly banter as we are on a semi-delirious day I'm, i am i feel i am feeling like a little odd today and it we've might had be, like three days straight of podcasting well and honestly i will say the minute i open up dad stuff i get a little weird distracted i get like an edgy hard shell a little bit that isn't like super soft and warm and I wasn't even disappointed when it went over there and he forgot that we had this lunch. I was more like, oh, okay, this is kind of nice. I have so much I need to do. But Triggers. It still it's like a, some kind of trigger for you. Daddy issues. I want to share before we start, uh, one thing is that Amy and I are, in our best of our ability, we're going to start answering some sex questions on Instagram yep. uh, live. So the live Instagram, if you're not following Shameless Sex Podcast on Instagram, follow us because we're going to start answering sex questions at least once a week. We Which record typically right on now. Thursdays. Yeah. We're going to go into it now, but this isn't um, live podcast. So uh, when you are listening to this, if it's Tuesday uh, or Wednesday, Thursdays, typically we're going to try to do that um, various times. So ask your sex question and we'll let you know. Hopefully we're going to try to answer as many as we can, but we're going to um, at least answer three right yeah. now because we have three written down. And if we have more time, then we'll do more. So follow us on Instagram, tell your friends, and we might answer your sex question. We love you. And bio time. <clears throat> Joan Price calls herself an advocate for ageless sexuality. She is the author of four noteworthy books about sex and aging, including the award winning Naked at Our Age, Talking Out Loud About Senior Sex, and the brand new Sex After Grief, Navigating Your Sexuality After Losing Your Beloved, which sounds fucking awesome i'm so happy she wrote that she lost her own beloved and then wrote this book i started crying when i heard that incredible joan is known by american and global media as the voice of senior sex her award-winning blog has been offering senior sex news views and sex toy reviews since 2005 and at age 75 when she's fucking is in amazing shape joan continues to talk out loud about senior sex partnered or solo and find joan and her books at joan j-o-n a n price.com and by the way i don't this isn't even the bio but we talk about it she has that new with video. jessica drake on, who's a, a, a hot porn star and she's amazing and she's a sex educator sex. and yes. joan is just is she's just incredible. a fantastic human and she's you're gonna love this podcast even if you're not actually thinking that you're having senior sex this podcast still has tips for f- folks that maybe have some mobility issues mm-hmm. or they're they have aches and pains you have carpal t- there's like a lot of different so much it's so many things yeah. that you could be affected by your body isn't what it used to be in general no matter what i mean i'm 37 my body i feel great and healthy but it's still i took a lot of what she said um and have applied it you're uh, even in 40 my sex life. And you don't even consider yourself a senior but your body is not what it was when it was 20 right so there's applicable information for completely everyone so stay tuned lots of fun stuff and we can actually just be straightforward about this before we dive in here is a little info about manscaped this podcast is made possible by manscaped manscaped offers precision engineered tools for you or your man's family jewels i'm personally a huge fan of a well-trimmed bush that's why i recently gave my partner manscaped's redesigned electric trimmer the lawnmower 2.0 and he absolutely loves it. With its skin-safe technology, this trimmer won't nick or snag any nuts. Manscaped also has a crop cleanser, a crop reviver, aka for your goods, and best of all, the crop preserver, a fabulous ball deodorant for anti-chafing. Dripping with perspiration from living life on the go, going for a sweaty bike ride, or perhaps you're getting clammy during that awkward first date, Manscaped's crop preserver will keep you fresh and dry just when you need it. And guess what? Our listeners get 20% off and free shipping with the code SHAMELESS at manscaped.com. 
That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use code SHAMELESS and your bits will thank you for it. All right, everyone, episode time. This episode is with Joan Price, as you heard in the bio in the intro, and we are just going to dive right in. Joan, we're so happy to have you on our show. Thank you for joining us on Shameless Sex. It is my pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, we are um, elated and ecstatic. And you have all these new things coming out that we're talking about or that are already out, books and DVDs. Um, Will you tell our listeners, we already read your bio, but can you tell our listeners a little more about how you got to be where you are today? Yes. um, I'm 75 years old right now. And at age 61, I wrote my first senior sex book, Better Than I Ever Expected, Straight Talk About Sex After 60. I did that to celebrate older age sexuality because I was in the most incredible dynamic relationship with a man who was seven years older than I was. We had met when I was 57 and he was 64 and our sex life couldn't be better. It was not the same as younger age sex though. And I thought, why is it such a mystery about how sex changes with age and how it can be better than I ever expected. So I decided I would write one book, one book I thought I was going to write. It has since turned into five. And my life work, I think, although I had other careers before this, this is this is my full time day job is talking out loud about senior sex. Yeah, I'm I'm so happy that you are doing the work that you're doing. I remember uh, carrying um, actually a number of your books at Pure Pleasure, the shop that I own with my mom there, and better the better than I expected, and the um, as it the ultimate guide to sex after fifty, and um, probably naked at our age, and naked at our age as well. Yeah, we carry. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, all of these really, really important work, and really happy that you're uh, doing what you're doing, and also on our on our podcast sharing. Wait, what, what did you do before? I just want, I, I was just curious. Yeah. <laughs> this may be hard to believe. I was a high school English teacher. Ah. And after that, I was an, um, an exercise professional. Uh, the, the short story of it is that I almost died in an automobile accident and my fitness habit saved my life, which made me realize I had a mission to share the joy of movement. So I switched from Um, teaching high school English to teaching and speaking about and writing about exercise and fitness. Mm. And that I met Robert. Mm -hmm. My life changed again. (laughs) Isn't it funny the kind of the paths and the twists and turns journeys take and people also, it's good to know that even if you're 60 or 70 or 50 or whatever age you are, you can still have a new career and a new passion and a new drive, which is I think incredible because you can always rewrite your story. And what you're saying about how our paths change, you don't know where we're going to be led by something that seems totally unrelated to anything else. For example, the whole reason I met Robert is that when I went through menopause, I was teaching an early morning aerobics class. And I decided going through menopause and having hot flashes and sleep disruption that I didn't want to set an alarm for six in the morning. So I switched to teaching evening line dancing classes. And that was where I met Robert. Uh Had I not had night sweats and disturbed sleep, I never would have met this man. I like that. He must have been a good dancer. (laughs) Oh, yeah. As As I put it in one of my books, when he started to move his hips, I tried to remember to breathe. Oh, that's hot. So... And you, I mean, you specialize in senior sex. I mean, this is like what most of your books are about and uh, they've actually helped so many people. And when our listeners hear senior sex, um, you know, it's good to tell them who you're speaking to. And, and, and if there's, you know, people out there, if they were asking themselves, am I a senior sex? Am I having senior sex? But what does that look like? Uh, who, who are these people? These are people whose sexual responses change 
with age. This can happen at 48. This can happen at 61. Um, there isn't a clear age where you start to qualify, in air quotes, uh, <laughs> to read my work. In fact, the earlier you read it, the better, because then the changes won't be so scary. But it's a, but at a certain, at, slowly, it's not abrupt. If it's abrupt, there is a medical problem and you need to get it checked. Generally, though, gradually, our responses uh, slow down. We need more time for arousal. We don't function as well as we used to. And I guess I, I shouldn't even say well, because it's a whole different way of seeing what's, what's great about sex. Erections are not as reliable, are not as hard, are not as easy to maintain. Um, maybe for our vaginas don't welcome uh, penetration as much or at all anymore for a myriad myriad reasons our desire is harder to come by orgasms take longer there there are changes that happen in the way we respond sexually and this is not a bad thing you know for example uh our our orgasms take longer to arrive at well who doesn't want longer arousal Mm -hmm. haven't we wanted that our whole lives so um I love the changes, actually, and for every problem, there is a solution, and part of the solution is is expanding our mind about what constitutes good sex. What do we need for good sex? What does that even look like? And letting go of our old notions that sex equals dot, 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 whatever we thought it was in our youth, and seeing it as many different options for sexual pleasure. It sounds like the the key to what you're saying is to uh, to accept and understand that things change, our bodies change over time. I know we live in a culture where people really like to fight that, whether it's with you know wanting to look youthful and aesthetics, but also the actual physical changes of the body that maybe you can't even see, but you can feel. Uh, and part of that, is, it sounds like, is to accept and embrace that and, and then shift with the times to see who am I now as a sexual being and in doing those regular check-ins like what you know what applies to me now might not apply it to me 20 years ago but what what am I desire now is that really what your um, kind of the premise of your work that you're helping people to see you speak such wisdom I love the way you express that yes that's exactly right And part of it is also learning to communicate, because if we are partnered, and good sex is not necessarily partnered, we can have great solo sex too. Mm -hmm. But if we happen to be partnered, communication is the key. Figuring out how things have changed, learning the most we can about the causes and about the workarounds and what we can do instead, and then communicating that. I really like it if you. uh, I get great pleasure from I don't get so much pleasure from it. We need to learn to talk about it in a loving way. A lot of what I teach is just, what do you say? Mm -hmm. And someone the other day actually suggested that it might be time for me to write a sexual script for ways to open up that communication, start with a script and then see where it goes. Mm -hmm. I've got that on my very long to-do list. (laughs) <laughs> and so obviously you named some of the ways the body changes with age um so uh, how does this affect sex in terms of you talked about solo sex and sex with someone else you know how does actual ha- uh, sex change in um in terms of one's ability to connect with partners or i'm sure like you know, there's aspects of like the movements being different and the lubrication and so can you just tell our listeners some of the ways that sh- sex shifts um we need lubrication We need longer arousal. We may not be even comfortable in the positions that we liked the most when we were younger. That's a real shock to many people. Well, wait a minute. I can't take the weight on my knees. How do I do the position I like best? Um, There are so many different ways. And one of the things we do is we don't give up when something changes. We go, okay, let me learn the most I can about that. Let me read the books. Let me... Uh, watch the webinars, let me take a class, and then let me talk to my partner about what we can adjust. Another way is we need a lot more ten- sensation, most of us, and that's for any gender. Uh, we, we need more sensation for arousal. We need more sensation for orgasm. 
So that will often mean a well-placed, well-chosen sex toy. And that's often the difference between reaching orgasm and not being able to. Mm -hmm. So we need to also, I mean, this is nothing for people your age, but for people my age who didn't grow up with, with the acceptance of sex toys that you did, we need to unlearn what we were brought up with and relearn how sexual pleasure happens for us now. That's true. And that could be at any age. I mean, really, even even if you're in your 30s, my, I'm 37. I feel like some serious changes are shifting in my body too. So uh, you just have to keep checking in with yourself. And the communication piece is huge. And I think people a lot of times get tired of that. Like, oh, communication is always key, but it really is. No one that you're with is going to be a psychic and know what's going on in your body. So yeah. it's important to tell them. And it's it's, it's, it's easier the more you do it, right? Like the script piece. Practice. I often say mind reading is vastly overrated. <laughs> yeah. We've never done it well. We don't do it well now. And people are operating on what they think works. And if you're, for example, in a long-term relationship, your partner will think, well, she always liked this, so I'll just do it longer. When maybe the this isn't even what turns us on anymore. We need to be able to talk about it. Yeah, I, and I love that advice. Um, and moving with some, so you have a lot of, of amazing information in your book, and we wanted to kind of get some quick tips uh, for a few pieces. So a few questions for our listeners. The first of which, and I'm hoping I'm hoping that the answer isn't just going to be Viagra or Cialis, you know, uh, but it could be. I don't know. That's why I want to ask um, if folks aren't getting enough or they're not getting erections as maybe they used to. Uh, what are some tips for that? Have glorious sex without the goal of penetration. Learn how to pleasure each other with hands and mouths and sex toys and laughter and communication. And if the erection happens and you both happen to want penetration at that moment, great. But it doesn't need to be the goal. In fact, it shouldn't be the goal because having it be the goal just increases the anxiety. Will I be able to stay hard long enough? Besides, if you're having partner, if you're having partnered sex with a person with a vulva, the statistics say that only 25% of people with vulvas reach orgasm through penetrative sex exclusively. Mm -hmm. So um, why is that the end all? Mm -hmm. Let's have glorious arousal and orgasms and intimacy without worrying about whether penetrative sex happens. Mm -hmm. Also, when you're doing that, what it allows you to do is concentrate on the pleasure of one person and then concentrate on the pleasure of the other person. Instead of thinking, we're going to do this one thing, and it's going to bring us both to orgasm. Well, maybe it will, but probably it won't. And why is that even a, an issue? Give me the time I need for mine. I'll give you the time you need for yours. It's like having sex twice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I try, So I had this experience that I tried um, with uh, having sex with someone who whose penis wasn't super hard. It was hard. It had some blood flow, but it wasn't like rock hard. And what they did was they actually, um, this was like a total life hack to me. They actually, while still having uh, their penis inside of me, that, but it was like somewhat soft, they actually inserted a finger on top of it. So this mm -hmm. finger was up and kind of wrapped on my G spot. So it still felt like there was this, you know, hard, cock inside of me hmm. the cock was still inside of me but the, there was a finger doing all the work and it was amazing and so there's just ways that you're talking you know, you're talking about getting creative not making it all about this body part needing to be a certain way there's so many ways that you can get creative and try different things exactly creativity we really prize that and that your brain is your biggest sex organ too. So the pressure piece that you were mentioning is it's important to to shed some light on that and let folks know like you, you don't have to have goal-oriented sex and it doesn't have to be like, am I going to orgasm? Is my penis going to get hard? And then there, there are lots of ways. I, lo I love that um, addition, Amy. That's great. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, it was, it was fun. All right. What about, I know, I mean, I was like, ooh, this is interesting. I'm going to tell everyone, including I am now on the air. Um, so, okay, another one. What about someone who is going through menopause and they're feeling the shifts in their body? Some tips for them. <laughs> um. <laughs> I'll tell you, the only way that I, w when I was going through the worst of it, um, I needed ice cubes. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
ice cubes on my chest. Sometimes even just insert an ice cube in my vagina and I'll feel a lot better. I don't know if this is a tip that would work for other people. And believe it or not, I don't think I've ever given this tip publicly, but it worked for me. And this was from uh, from the hot, like hot flashes specifically? Yes. I mean, my whole body, it wasn't just hot flashes. It was that the whole body was unreliable. The whole body was... Um, I was teaching aerobics at that time, too, and I taught aerobics. This was in the days that we wore leotards. And I would take, the night before, I would freeze a water bottle, a a filled water bottle, so that it would become an ice bottle the next day. I would put this ice bottle down down my cleavage, my leotard, Mm -hmm. and I would teach not having to hold on to it because the, the, the leotard was spandex and held it tightly. I would teach my class gradually melting the ice in my water bottle. Mm, smart. You know, we cope. With, there should be more information about how to cope. In fact, I wrote an article about this. Um, it was one of my first articles for publication way back when I was, I don't know, 48 maybe. And I said... We should design a line of hot flash wear made of patches Velcroed at the borders. And when the hot flash strikes, we just start pulling off the patches and airing our hot spots and then slap them back on again when we're done. Has this, has this come into fruition yet? Has it happened? No, no. And I'm very happy to give, to, to give away or maybe sell that idea. <laughs> I am, uh, honestly, I am a hot sleeper and I am terrified of menopausal hot flashes when I get older because I already sleep so hot. And I'm like, am I just going to explode when I'm sleeping? Like, because I've heard so many horror stories about just like the hot flashes. And is that for, does everyone, is that a typical sign of menopause? I mean, the hot flashes? Well, it is a typical, but everybody experiences it differently. There are people who sail through menopause. Okay. And they go, oh, my period stopped. Huh, just noticed. Oh. <laughs> and there are other people who go through great agony. The helpful thing is if you consult your doctor, your medical professional, there are things that can help you. Now, not everyone can go on hormone replacement therapy. It depends on, on your medical background, your medical risks. For those who can, they often find it a godsend. For others, there are alternative ways that, that can help them. I'm... I'm so far removed from menopause at this point. It was decades ago, and you know, senior memory. I just, re- <laughs> I just remember how it felt, but it wasn't anything that limited me. I just said, okay, if I get over hot, overheated when I teach aerobics, it doesn't mean I stop teaching aerobics. It means I, I remember to put the water bottle in the freezer the night before. So you'll find ways that help you. And I remember too that that one year, I. Now, I live in Northern California, so it isn't as if I live in the Midwest, so it doesn't get so cold that people would freeze to death in my house, but it does get cold in the winter, and I never turned the heat on the winter I was going through menopause. People would sit in my living room, and they wouldn't take off their jackets. <laughs> <laughs> They'd have their scarves wrapped and mittens on, talking to me, and said, Joan, can we go to a coffee shop where I can take my jacket off? Um, so you just cope. But if it is severe, you you go to your medical professional and get a good one. Get someone who understands what you're going through. Mm -hmm. There are so many different ways of of addressing these these challenges, but also know you'll come out the other end and it'll be delightful. And what about um, the elasticity of the vaginal canal and how that that changes in menopause and and, um, folks who want to uh, to work with that shift. There are, uh, this is a big topic that we won't be able to address totally, but um, yes, the, the vagina becomes less elastic, but the, the, the big problem is that the tissue's thin. So uh, friction can feel left less comfortable. And we, in using sex toys, we often prefer, if we want penetration with the sex toy, we often will choose a slender one, whereas maybe before we liked one that was a little fuller. We, um, we welcome the more the slenderer penises, in fact. Sorry, uh, big guys, but you're going to have to work with us on that. We, um, 
Now, estrogen replacement will help that. And, and there are lots of different ways you can get that estrogen. And again, a medical professional is what you need to talk to about that. The other thing, though, is the more you have sex, the more receptive your vagina is going to be to sex. Mm -hmm. So don't say, well, because this is, doesn't feel the same as it did before, I will uh, not have sex until, I don't know, for another 10 years. Also, when our relationships change, and maybe, let me backtrack a little, I hear from people who say, I'm not in a relationship now, either I lost my spouse uh, to, to death or divorce, or I was dumped, or I did the dumping, and I'm single now, and I'm not dating and so there's no reason to think about sex till I'm sexually active again, if it ever happens. No, we need to keep ourselves sexually healthy. Or by the time we want to be sexually active again, whenever that might be, whether it's in a week or, or, or eight years, we will find it much more problematic and uncomfortable, maybe painful. So it is up to us to keep ourselves sexually healthy by having regular sex, whether with ourselves or a partner, and with ourselves is just fine. Having regular orgasms, learning to use lubricant. If we have a problem that is interfering with our sexual function or pleasure, we need to consult a medical professional. And one of the things I do in all of my workshops is I teach people the medical mantra for teaching, for talking to your doctor about sex at our age. And I, that is online on my YouTube channel. Also, if people look for the Joan Price YouTube channel, you'll see, um, you'll see the medical mantra, which I taught actually to a university class. Mm. So they'd have it ready when they needed it. Mm, that's awesome. Get it at the forefront. Uh, one thing that came to mind, actually two things. One, um, I don't know if you're a fan of Uber Lube, but Uber Lube is... Oh, I love Uber Lube. So it's so good. It Absolutely. has a vitamin They're E. They're one of my sponsors, in fact. Oh, good. They're one of yeah. ours, too. And we, they have, I think, I forgot, in the U.S. alone, I think it's over 500 or 1,000 doctors on board recommending it specifically for folks who are yeah. going through menopause because it has a little vitamin E in it. So the um, drugstore lubricant, if folks are listening out there, it's it's not what you sh should be using and we don't like to should. However, there's a lot of chemicals that can affect your, your pH balance of your vagina. It can, it can dry. Yeah. It can even create more dryness, which is the yeah. opposite of why you're using lube. So if you are one of those folks out there listening right now and you buy drugstore lubricant, just consider something else. I, and I'll do the should if you can't. You should not use drugstore lubricant. <laughs> Buy your lubricant from one of the sex toy retailers that is health-based, education-based, not just sales-based. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, it makes a big difference. And the other thing I was thinking about in terms of um, that, you say, well, you, were, you were saying, I don't, it's a little bit like if you don't use it, you're going to lose it. Like but, it yeah. Yeah. but it's not, and not entirely true. It's, you're saying it's just going to be challenging say you were like, oh, I'm just not sexually active, but I'll do it. I'll have sex when I'm there. And then 10 years later, when you finally do, you're like, whoa, this is an uphill battle. There's a lot that's different. And it's not, my understanding is that it's not like, oh, you're just stuck that way. There's so much that you can still do. And I think we, I want, I'd like you to, maybe you to confirm this theory. I think we live in a society that says, once you go through menopause, you dry up and that's it. And that still is just a bit of the general consensus. Are you finding that, so say a vagina owning human um, continues to stay sexually active with themselves or another person, they don't have this break away from that and they continue to the practices that they can still stay in maybe elasticity will change, but the, ju the juiciness is still available. Well, the juiciness depends on what you mean by juiciness. I mean, we don't, we may not lubricate. I don't lubricate now, naturally, but I grab my Uber Lube or if I'm using a, a silicone sex toy, I grab one of the wonderful, uh, uh, one of the wonderful water-based ones, like the ones from Wicked Sensual. Mm -hmm. And it's just a part of, of my sex play, solo or partnered. If, if partnered, uh, the the lube is always right there to grab it. There's no, oh, but you ought to be able to lubricate naturally. No, why should? Why do you say that? Yeah. What do you know about that? Nothing. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, we change. We, we change in how we respond. So we don't have to think, well, I have to do the things that will get me back to the way I was sexually at 35. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be the same as I was uh, half my lifetime ago. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that doesn't mean it can't be wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's, I think, that that's the key to, yeah. to all of this is that doesn't mean it cannot be wonderful. You can still have great sex, even if it was 10 years ago. Now is your, now is your time yeah. right now during this podcast. Uh, yes. Right take now. a break. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I, I know part, I mean, everybody experiences shifts in, in libido in their, in their lives throughout their life. And I'm, I'm sure, and we've heard it from other, even listeners that have written us, um, there are major shifts that happen during senior sex or the years that um, are following even after your forties. So uh, I'm, I'm sure you have some awesome tips, um, some quick tips for those folks that are experiencing shifts in libido. And I would love if you could share, especially with me too. I'm with someone that could be considered a senior. I won't, okay. that, but maybe, maybe. maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the thing about um, shifts in libido and desire I teach my audiences, and I'll just give a quick overview of it right now, the difference between spontaneous desire and responsive desire. The difference is spontaneous desire is where the hormones say, oh, I want to have sex right now, now. Whereas responsive desire is, well, I'm not feeling it on my own, but once we get started, it starts to kick in. So in other words, once you get started physiologically getting aroused, then the libido starts to bloom and the desire starts to fire. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. 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 And, and people don't understand that. They think, well, if I'm not in the mood, as they put it, I'm doing lots of air quotes during this podcast. <laughs> I, I hope everybody is hearing them. <laughs> air quotes. Uh, if uh, often... Senior people, particularly senior vulva owners, will say, well, if I'm not in the mood, I won't have sex. I'll wait till I'm in the mood. Months go by. Mm -hmm. So here's the thing. If when you get started, you enjoy it, then just get started mm -hmm. and the mood will kick in. Mm -hmm. And the more often you do respond sexually, the more easily you will respond sexually over time. So it's really the best sex training you can give your body is to keep giving yourself arousal and orgasm. This is where sex toys really do help too. Oh, it kind of yeah. helps um, get the, the whole, uh, sorry, someone's knocking. We're going to have to pause for a second. We're at a hotel. We'll, we'll edit this part. Okay, game on. I stopped because that was that. Okay. Uh, so oh, you just I just stopped. We'll just have to edit, right? We'll say, okay. Uh, so, okay. Shifts in libido. What was the last thing we were talking about? Um, the shifts in libido. So, okay. So one of an, uh, another, we get asked a lot of questions. This is where some of these questions are stemming from. And, and um, folks experience shifts in mobility too uh, for senior sex. And, uh, there, there obviously, as you were mentioning, maybe a position that you loved uh, hurts your knees now. So uh, the question is, what can what can folks do to what can folks do that are experiencing these shifts in mobility? I'd like to suggest first doing these things before you have mobility issues, but I will talk to your question, and that is to not get hooked on one position, one way, one method of enjoying sex, but to keep expanding that so you have options to choose from. And then when, if one position doesn't work so well, you, you know what you can rely on. If, however, you didn't prepare this in advance and you have shifts in mobility, as you put it, and a, a position that was your go-to position for having sex or for orgasm is no longer comfortable or possible for you, then relax the expectation that that's the only way that you can enjoy sex 
and go on a journey of exploration, as I call it, to find out what will work for you now. Try other positions. Try other methods. Try Bring sex toys into it, even if it is partnered sex. Bring whatever you need to be comfortable. There are wonderful uh, sex uh, cushions and furniture and all sorts of things that you can buy or that you can um, you can rig that will make sex more comfortable for you. If, however, you say there's only one position that I can reach orgasm in and that's it. If I can't in that position, I'll never have another orgasm. Well, I'm not sure that's true, but if you believe it to be true, do other things first to where you are so aroused that you're right on the brink. And then for the last moments, get into that position that you can't stay in for very long until that happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that I, I like that. I, I think I've given that advice to people. I think the same thing with, um, you know, ejaculatory control and, mm-hmm. you know, cause it's all about the, the, the penetration and like, we'll do a whole bunch of other things that feel good and then save the penetration for just this other small moment as opposed to put making it the, the main act is just it's it's again getting creative and thinking outside yeah. of the box and it's, in your in your your example bring your partner to orgasm before yeah penetration yeah and, and you then, yeah some of those the furniture things you're talking about they, the um there's like the liberator pillows that mm-hmm. they have the wedge and the ramp yes. Um, Absolutely. Those, those are really good for raising the pelvic floor. They have all those at Pure Pleasure. If you all go to purepleasureshop.com, you get 15% off with coupon code SHAMELESSX. Um, will you tell our listeners about your new DVD, The Guide to Wicked Sex, Senior Sex? It was with Jessica Drake, correct? It was. It is. And I'm so excited about it. It just released. The premiere, which was at Woodhull, was just a few days ago. Mm where we premiered the Jessica and I were both there along with two of the sexy seniors who were in the film. And we premiered it at Woodhull to, I don't know uh, how many people were in the room, but it was a packed ballroom. And they were so, they responded with such warmth and acceptance and, and, and excitement mm. to the idea that here we have for the first time, this is an instructional video about how to have better sex as a senior. I am, I wrote the narration and I'm on camera, fully clothed, giving my narration. And the explicit scenes feature two senior couples, one of whom have been together a long time. They've known each other for half a century. They haven't been together all that time. They we're lovers, and then they drifted apart, and then they found each other again, mm. and they tell their story, and now they're together, and they are so tender and passionate. The other couple did not meet until the day of the film shoot, wow. <laughs> and that was intentional because part of being a senior and having sex is ways to enjoy sex with a long-term partner, but also how do you negotiate, experience, explore when you're with a brand new person. Mm. So we wanted that to happen. So we solicited two people that were willing to do that. And you show the negotiation, the conversations. Absolutely. There's a lot of conversation in, in with both couples. Mm. I mean, with the long-term couple, it's sometimes I, I can't stay in this position any longer, or I love it when you pull my hair, but it needs to be more gently because it's hurting me today. I this I think it's so important that that's so it sounds like this is an instructional DVD but also kind of like a hot porn in one. It uh, is tasty. well I would not call it hot porn I would call it hot explicit scenes. Hot explicit scenes. The, I, my diff, the way I would differentiate it is that porn as marvelous said it is, as it is is fantasy sex. Mm-hmm. It's not how you should be having sex. Mm-hmm. But this this film is how people, real people in their real lives, do have sex. Can you also download the film? Do you know if that, that's You will be able to. It okay. will be available video on demand. It isn't yet. At the time we're recording this, which is in August 2019, it is only available on DVD. And you can get it from my website, joanprice.com, or the website will tell you how to order it, it will actually connect you to emailing me about that. 
it will be available more widely as it rolls out in other countries and it will be available available maybe September or so. Uh, so by the time the show airs, it will probably be available uh, uh, as video on demand VOD. And you also wrote a book, which I think is so important, and it's called Sex After Grief, Navigating Your Sexuality After Losing Your Beloved. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? This is my newest book, my baby book. It just birthed um, a few days ago. And it is, uh, I tell you, I told you about starting to write about senior sex because of my love affair with, with my great love, Robert. Well, I lost Robert to cancer seven years after our first kiss, exactly seven years. And it was in 2008, and I have just lately been able to write the book that I wish I had been able to read when I was going through my grief journey and trying to figure out how I could be a sexual being again when the person I wanted to have sex with was dead. So this book, and I'm so proud of it, so I mean, it makes me cry even just to think that, yes, I wrote this book, and now it's available for people. It combines my grief journey and the things I tried, because I tried so many different ways of dating, not dating, having sex with an old friend, not being able to go through with it, having finding a friend with benefits was able to go through with it. Dating again, um, finally meeting someone on OkCupid okay that that became a real connection, an intimate connection for me. But this took years. This took years and it took many mistakes and it took all sorts of uh, fear and guilt and confusion. And so I wanted to help people not have to go through what I went through in order to learn the same things I learned. In addition, uh, several dozen grievers who are subscribers to my newsletter sent me their stories, and I include excerpts from their experiences, some advice from experts. So it is, it's a small book. It's a book you can keep in, a big, in, in your pocket or in your purse to read when you want to, but it has lots of information. It encourages you at the end of every chapter to create your own action plan for putting the advice into action. And I'm so proud of it and so eager to share it with you. Wow. Again, joanprice.com is where you'll find it. I think that is such an important piece of uh, everybody uh, at some point is going to lose someone in their life. And that's, that's right. there aren't a lot of resources for folks out there, especially dealing with sex. And after, can I say there are none? Yeah. Well, there you go. For them. So there you go. And so that's so important. So thank you for thank that you offering. For doing that. That's yeah. Thank you. I'm sure that was really uh, a journey for you as well. So you're giving back, Joan, and you're giving back so amazingly to everyone out there. Can you please tell our listeners where they can find you and if you have any um, social media that they can follow you at as well? That would be great. Absolutely. JoanPrice.com is where you'll be connected to everything. There are links there to my Twitter, my Facebook, my books, my webinars, um, and anything <laughs> everything we've talked about today, tips, my newsletter. So joanprice.com, just play around in there. And um, I look forward to having you join me in my community. Oh, thank you so much for all the work that you're doing. We're so excited about your new DVD. I can't wait to watch it. Uh, Jessica Drake's such an awesome powerhouse human too. So uh, check that out. It's available now. And if you haven't done so already, y'all, check out Margins Wine. Amy and I have been huge fans now for two years running. And it's not because it's just amazing. It's small boutique wine. It's made in small batches. It's very low in sulfites. I never get a hangover. I, I, I haven't had one and uh, in a long time. So if you haven't done so, go to marginswine.com. Check that out. Last but not least, we would just want to thank Joan again for taking the time to share her work with us and all of you. Thanks, Joan. My pleasure. To our listeners out there, if you haven't done so, give us five stars on iTunes. It helps more people become part of the shameless sex revolution. We love you all. See you next Tuesday. Ciao for now.
where do you think you are going? Traipsing through my forest? Hmm? Did you not see the sign? Hmm? I, the sign. It's not for mere decoration, Arya. That sign is a contract between you and I, my beauty. And it's binding. By stepping into my forest, you have entered into an agreement. Entering my home, agreeing to the tone, giving yourself over to my will. <laughs> there is no use in struggling against your bindings, Arya. You have chosen to come here, and here you shall remain, until you satisfy my fee. And in the meantime, I do so enjoy your company. There are a great many reasons why a traveler might enter my realm. Mm -hmm. ah, curiosity. Necessity. Mm -hmm. Gallantry. Mm -hmm. Which one of them are you? Hmm? Mm. Don't forget to head on over to our website at shamelesssex.com for more. And for 15% off of some of our favorite sex toys, use coupon code SHAMELESSPP in all caps at purepleasureshop.com.